session. So, Hare Krishna devotees, Prabhuji and Mataji, and welcome to today's class of what the, uh, this uh, level two, Karma Yoga. We are continuing with chapter number six. Let us pray to Shri Shri Radha Govindji for their blessings. Om Gyan Timiran Dasi Gyan and Jan Shalakya Chakshurun Vidita Mena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. Om Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Peshtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedant Swamini Ki Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurvani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyat Desh Tarani Jayo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda E Krishna Karna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesh Gopika Kanta, Shri Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapt Kanchan Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Prashvanatu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to today's class again. So we have discussed ne the necessity. In fact, it, yogi can be successful only in his yogi uh, ex exercise when he is able to control the mind. When mind is controlled, then senses are automatically controlled. And when senses are controlled, there is no desire for sense, self-sense gratification and mind is under, under control then intelligence takes over and intelligence lies in knowledge. And knowledge is the following the different disciplines of Ashtanga Yoga. So it is very essential that one must control the mind. But we know that it is a very, very difficult stage. Now we shall discuss about in further verses what happens when a person is able to control his mind perfectly in Ashtanga, through Ashtanga Yoga. And second stage, one, the if the person who is a yogi fails to control his mind perfectly, then what is his fate or destination? And destination means what happens to him. Uh, is Does he go, get liberation or he is still bound to the cycle of birth and death? And how does he get liberated ultimately? So this is the section we shall be studying today. And Lord Krishna earlier said uh, that uh, this in this verse, Yoma Pashyati Sarvatra, Sarvam Chamai Pashyati, Tasya Aham Na Pranashyami, Sacha Me Na Pranashyati. One who sees me uh, everywhere and everything in me, he is never lost to me and I am never lost to him. That means he is always a well wisher, a friend, a protector of such a devotee. So, this is what we studied. Now, today we will continue with this part controlling the turbulent mind. I, as we discussed yesterday, the mind is so turbulent that it is not easy to control. The person, the devotee, pure devotee, pure Vaishnava like Arjuna, he says that he is not able, mind is so turbulent that per perhaps he cannot succeed himself, uh, uh, in, uh, he, he can't succeed in doing Ashtanga Yoga. And it is impracticable and unendurable in this Kali Yoga, in, in this age. So uh, how to control the mind? That is what Lord Krishna is going to speak about now. And he emphasizes that his yogi cannot succeed unless he is able to control his mind. So that is the primary requirement. One has to, if one wants to advance in advanced yoga, uh, ashtanga yoga, or reach an advanced stage, then he has to follow the eight lips very strictly controlling his mind. Yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, dharna, dhyan, and samadhi. Especially the dharna, dhyan, and samadhi cannot be achieved if the person is not focused and controlled with the mind. You can see here, uh, does anybody uh, know who is uh, who are these two figures here in this picture? This yeah. is uh, Arjun and uh, Dronacharya. Yes, Mataji, very nice. So Dronacharya is a perfect archer, you know, and he had trained Arjuna and uh, you can see that he, he not only always a guide and a mentor to mentor to all the five Pandavas in this picture. In this picture, you can see Parashram uh, with, uh, fighting with uh, Sahastra Arjuna 
he had 100,000 uh, arms, uh, but that is the fight going on. And these are two Goswamis here, you can see. So, yes, this one, Chanda Mataji would like to read it. Yes, yes Prabhuji. Yes, please continue, Mr. Hare Krishna. Yes, Arjuna Vacha Yo Yam Yogastwa Yo Yo Yam Yogastwaya Priyoktaha Samin Madhu Sudana Etasyaham Etasaham na Pashami Chanchalatwa Stiti Stiram Arjuna said O Madhusudana, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears Im impractical and uh, unendurable to me. For the mind, for the mind is restless and unsteady. Thank you, Mataji. So earlier we heard, uh, Krishna told Arjuna that uh, a person who is established in yoga is samdarshi. He is equiposed both to a, a contrasting situation or opposite circumstances of life, as well as dualities of life, as well as to friends and foes. Now, Arjuna is confused that, well, it is all right for friends, I can be equiposed. But foes or the enemies, they are karvas here opposite, just uh, the entire army is just standing opposite him. So how, how he could be equiposed towards army, uh, those uh, uh, these uh, enemies. So he says that uh, you have uh, summarized the system of yoga, but for me it is impractical because I cannot be equiposed towards my enemies and it is uh, it can't be endured. That means a person following the discipline of Ashtanga Yoga may uh, not continuously be successful in following those discipline and it may not endure for long time. That means there is a chance of degradation or fall down. So because why? The reason is because the mind is very restless and unsteady. unsteady. So, and for yogic success, success in Ashtanga Yoga, the first qualification is control, perfect control of mind. So, Arjuna says here, this is a beautiful verse here, and it applies to all the devotees. Yes, Mataji, please read it. Yes, Prabhuji. Chanchalam hi manah krishna prami Pramati baladridham tasyaham nigraham manye va vayo riva su dushkarama su dushkaramam. For the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the mind. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Chanchalam hi manha Krishna pramadi balvad dranam tasya aham nigraham manne vayor eva sudushkaran. Control of winds is so difficult. But Arjuna says that I can control it even, but I can't control mind because it is so turbulent, it is so strong, and it is also powerful and also so obstinate. So, uh, in under these conditions, it is very difficult to control mind. And when I can't control mind, the, I cannot do a strong yoga. So, the, this is uh, the position you can see in this picture that uh, Vayu Dev is there, and the strong wind is blowing around this uh, place, and. Arjuna says that I can control this mind, uh, wind even, but I cannot control the mind. Now, why? And for yogic practice, control of mind is the uh, essential requirement. Then Krishna replies, so the doubt is that uh, I can't control my mind. The Krishna now replies. Yes, Mataji? Yes, Prabhu. Sanshayam Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam Abhyasento Konteya Vairagena Grihat Grihate Lord Krishna, Lord Shri Krishna said, O mighty armed son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless, restless mind. 
but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. Hare mm -hmm. Krishna. So, Abhyasin Vairagyena. That means Abhyas means practice and Vairag means detachment. Just by practice and Abhyas, you can control the mind. He agrees as Ashansayam Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam. The control of mind is, uh, you are right that controlling the mind is very, very difficult. But if one who is a spiritual seeker does uh, continuous practice and also is detached from the material uh, objects, then it is easy for him. He can do this uh, controlling of mind. Yeah, this is the same uh, mentioned here. So, two solutions to control the mind, abhyas and vairagya. Then the senses can be controlled by right practice and detachment. That is the solution to control the mind. Now, Krishna's further opinion. Anybody else would like to read it? Richard Jain Bhattaji, if you are there. Yes, Prabhuji. Please continue, Bhattaji. 36 and then 37. Yes. Krishna's opinion, Bhagavad Gita 6.36. For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult work. But he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. Trying to practice yoga while engaging the mind in material enjoyment is like trying to ignite a fire while pouring water on it. Similarly, Yoga practice without mental control is a waste of time. Bhagavad Gita 6.36 per perch. Srila So, this is a beautiful analogy is given here. If there is a fire which is blazing and uh, somebody uh, while trying, I, uh, no, not really blazing, when, when some wants to ignite a fire in wood, and keeps on pouring water over it, then you can't ignite fire and you can't burn that wood at all. So it is like this. One is this comparison is made with the uh, yogic practice. One who is trying to, who is not uh, able to control his mind, he is trying to control his mind. Yet, if material desires and sense gratification keeps on coming into his mind, he cannot control the mind. So uh, th this is an analogy. Compared to if you keep on pouring a water, you cannot ignite a fire uh, in the woods. So now we can if we take the summary of verse number 36 and 37. Then path for self-realization are three. First is Neskam Karma Yoga. Second is, uh, second is Jnana. Jnana is very difficult because knowledge is imperfect and nobody can understand Krishna fully. Third was Ashtang Yoga. Now, Ashtang Yoga, we have already discussed. It is not practicable, unendurable, and not possible with the present day turbulence of mind. Mind is very strong, it's too obstinate, and also very turbulent. Keeps on jumping from one idea to another like a monkey. So, it is very difficult to control mind. And last path of self realization is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the easiest is the swiftest. We, we have already studied that it is the uppermost uh, end of the ladder and it can be reached by anyone without following much rules regulation. Within this lifetime, one can achieve the perf highest perfection of life and uh, through Bhakti Yoga, that means can develop Krishna consciousness very easily if some certain few rules and regulations are used. And there is no really control of senses as such. All senses are utilized in these services of Lord Krishna, not for self-sense uh, self gratification. So, this is easy. Now, the problem in at this stage is, the earlier slide, yes, continuing with 36, 37. The problem here is that we have forgotten our relationship with Krishna. That is Sambandha. There are three terms which we, uh, we shall discuss now. Sambandha, Avidhi and Prayojan. Does anybody know about these terms? Has heard in the level one also. Sambandha, Abhidhi and Prayojan. No. Okay. Sambandha means that our what is our relationship with Supreme Personality of Godhead. We know we are eternal servant. We are part and parcel, eternal part and parcel of Lord Krishna. So this is our Sambandha. With, and what is uh, Abhidhi? Abhidhi, how to uh, realize 
this relationship or how to establish the relationship, the process of re-establishing this relationship is the uh, abhiti. And what is the prayojan? Prayojan means object or the purpose. Prayojan is to develop love for Krishna. So first we have to realize our relationship or samant. Then abhiti, what is the, the process of realization of that samant is uh, abhiti. And the prayojan is ultimately the objective of this process and samant or exercise is to have develop full Krishna consciousness or pure Krishna consciousness towards Lord uh, himself. Uh, Prabhuji, the second term, uh, I abhiti. did not get it. Uh, so, samant, prayojan and then the middle one? First is sab samant or relationship. Second is abhite, A-B-H-I D-E-Y-A Abhidhi. 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 Abhidhi is the process, Sambandh is relationship, and Prayojan is the purpose. You can write in short. Thank you. Is it okay? Is everybody, yes, uh, everyone clear about this three stages yes, of realization? So, why we are doing all this exercise? Because we have forgotten our relationship with God, and we do not know the correct process. And the processes which have been described in Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, or even in the uh, Ashtang Yoga, they are very, very difficult to follow in this yoga or this age because our mind are persons, devotees, pure devotee, Vaishnava, like Arjuna, says that mind is very turbulent, very chanchalam, chanchalam, he, manaha Krishna. Balvad, it is very strong, it is very obstinate, and it is very powerful also. So, how to do it? But what is happening? The mind is not controlled by the intellect but it is uh, uh, controlled by the senses and mind wants to also wants to enjoy so the senses overtake the intelligence the result is person acts under control of them becomes under control of the mind so controlling the mind is a basic requirement for success anywhere even in bhakti yoga control of mind is very essential one who has controlled the mind has automatically controlled the senses and he can direct the use of senses towards service of Lord Krishna. So this is uh, the ultimate stage. Now, now since Arjuna asked earlier that what happens to uh, if one fails in uh, controlling the mind and becomes unsuccessful while doing transcendental yoga uh, practice, then this question comes that what is the destination or what is the fate of such a unsuccessful yogi? Yes, Richa Jan Mataji, please read. Section 5, 6.37 to 6.45, the destination of the unsuccessful yogi. Unsuccessful transcendentalist obtain either heavily enjoyment followed by an aristocratic birth if they are slightly advanced or birth in a family of vice transcendentalists that bring them immediate further training if they are more advanced. Yeah, this one also, Mathai, then we'll discuss. What happens to the unsuccessful transcendentalist? Although he begins the process of self-realization with faith, he later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in perfection in mysticism. Thank you. Bhagavad Gita 6. Thank you, Mataji. 37, 38, 39. So the unsuccessful yogi, which is very likely to happen, because in this state, in, in this yoga. The practice of Ashtang Yoga is not recommended, but still if somebody does it, even pure devotional, uh, pure devotees like Arjuna could not accept uh, uh, the Ashtang Yoga as a uh, uh, acceptable practice or practical practice because he said it is impractical to, to perform. Then what to talk of us mundane persons? So if a person uh, does not <coughs> succeed in att attaining the Samadhi stage in Ashtang Yoga, what happens to him? So Krishna says that either he takes birth in an aristocratic family, <clears throat> where all means and uh, uh, medium are available for him to continue his journey, his spiritual journey from where he lost, uh, he uh, stopped in the last birth. Secondly, he may take birth in the transplant family of a transplantalist. Transplantalist means the <clears throat> family of Pure devotees who are already have a auspicious and pious environment in their home and they are already practicing Krishna consciousness. So unsuccessful yogi does not 
have any kind of loss um, because he continues to uh, enjoy what where he left in his devotional service uh, in, at the earlier stage. So <clears throat> there is no loss for him. That means this already we have discussed earlier also in <clears throat> 2.40, uh, second chapter, verse number 40, where Lord Krishna says that there is no loss for such a person. He, uh, here also again he asserted that he is not lost to me and I am lost, not lost to him. That means the journey continues from where he left in the last birth. That is, the last birth means at the time when he fell down from the practice of uh, Ashtanga yoga, yoga or yogi practice. Yes, Mataji, this one. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear, armed Krishna. Does such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both his spiritual and material success and perish like a ribbon cloud with no position in any sphere? Bhagavad Gita 6.38. Yeah, so in earlier, uh, here in 2.40, Lord says, Pratyabhahu na vidyate. That means there is no loss, there is no diminution in de uh, devotional service if one even falls down or one is not able to succeed in yogic practice. So Krishna says, now this is another, uh, uh, you know, uh, analogy which is given. We know that cloud moves in a certain compact form from uh, in, uh, in the sky. But sometimes the small part of cloud becomes detached from the main stream, main, uh, main, uh, you know, uh, cloud uh, collection. Then it loses its way and it loses uh, loses its path also. So the it, fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a riven cloud with no position anywhere. So Krishna Arjuna now is asking any uh, something more again. That of course yes he has taken birth in the family of an aristocratic family or a transcendentalist family where all facilities to continue his spiritual journey are present. But sometimes person who has fallen away, such a fallen uh, uh, soul, is does he lose all spiritual and material uh, success which he has gained in the yogic exercise? So, and perish like a ribbon cloud. Ribbon cloud, cloud means a cloud, patch of cloud which has detached from the main cloud. Uh, with no position. This is another doubt which Krishna uh, has to uh, Krishna has to answer now. This is my doubt to Krishna and I ask you to dispel it completely but for you no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Now he is uh, glorifying Krishna that probably you are the only person who can tell me what will happen to such a person who uh, does, uh, alright, he takes birth in the aristocratic or transcendentalist family or a Krishna conscious family but what about the material and uh, spiritual success that he has obtained in this life? So now Krishna answers. Yes, Mataji. Sri Bhagavan Vajra. Who Vaj? Partha neve na mutru vinashas tasya vidyate na kalyan kritik shid durgatin tat gachati. The Supreme Personality of God had said, Son of Partha, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with a destruction, either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. This is very important uh, statement of Lord Krishna. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So if we are in, in a mode of goodness and we continue to practice Krishna consciousness in the mode of goodness, then evil will not fall on us because Lord has assured that He is the protector and well wisher uh, of uh, His devotees, and He is more eager to take care of uh, His devotees rather than uh, we are uh, seeking Krishna's assistance or help or mercy in any manner by worship. So the uh, Lord assures that the person who has fallen down from uh, or has become unsuccessful in yoga practice. He does not fall down from his spiritual uh, activities which he has gained. So he is a transcendentalist who is engaged in auspicious activities, does not meet with destruction, neither pranashami nor in this world, nor in the spiritual world. Rather, he continues his spiritual journey in the spiritual world. And God is protector and also 
a maintainer of such a person. And the unsuccessful yogi, yes, Mataji, this can also, this is a... The yeah. unsuccessful yogi, Bhagavad Gita 6.40-45, pious birth into good family, revives the divine consciousness in early stage of life, that is youth, naturally attracted to the yogic principles. Examples? Yeah. Can anybody cite the examples of such a person who <clears throat> took birth in a good family and started his... Uh, uh, you know, his uh, devotional service in an early stage from Shastras, example from Shastras. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, though the, uh, it's, uh, he is an incarnation, uh, still Chaitanya Mahaprabhu belongs from, uh, I think he belonged from a very affluent family. Yeah, very nice. Because the parents were very pious, Sachi Mata, and they were very pious couple, in fact. Yes, one example, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and other examples. What about Prahlad Maharaj? Prahlad Maharaj. What about Narad Muni? He was son of a maid servant, and he heard just, he came in contact, uh, association with those sages who uh, came to stay in their hut uh, uh, in the Dhrubhasa. Dhruv Maharaj was in fact materially contaminated, but when Narad Muni guided him, he became spiritually... Uh, and what is this picture about? We have talked about this picture also. This is a, one of the examples. I will give you two examples more. Nahush. Uh, yes, Mataji. Nahush, um, I think it's uh, Nahush Maharaj. Uh, anyone else would like to guess? What about Jed Bharat? The King Rahuguna. And this is uh, and this is Jed Bharat. He acted right from he, he, you know, the story of Bharat Maharaj. He was attached to a deer and fawn, and then he took birth as a deer because in the second life, and he remembered previous life, uh, in fact, everything. Then third, uh, uh, then second birth was in the form of a uh, Jad Bharat, a young boy, born of a very pious and learned family, where he did not speak, utter a word. Everybody considered him to be a very big fool because he will not uh, lie. He will keep on sitting quietly and do nothing at home. And then this uh, Rahuguna was the name of the king who was uh, being carried to a forest in a in a plankin. But uh, you know, one of the uh, plankin bearer he got tired, so they caught hold of Jed Bharat. And Jed Bharat he was trying to save the small ants on the path so that they don't get, as a result, the plankin used to get a shake and uh, the Rahugana, King Rahugana was very annoyed with Jad Bharat. How this boy is really very big fool and he's jumping over and causing me so much of physical discomfort in the by Palki. So then he says that, uh, uh, then he uh, gives a talk and then he asks why you are behaving like this. Then Jad Bharat said that, Maharaja, uh, if you you are, you are unfit to be a king if you can't take care of an aunt in your kingdom. And I am just trying to, you know, save an aunt by jumping over the aunt. Otherwise, they, that will be killed and that will be a papa or sin for me. So this is how uh, Jad Bharat. And uh, Haridas Thakur is another example. Haridas Thakur was born in a Muslim family. And uh, by just coming in contact with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he got the right platform to rise to the uh, level of uh, Namachari, who was named and he was chanting three lakh names of Lord Krishna every day in 24 hours. And that is story of the, uh, the you know, that uh, prostitute sent by the local Nawab or King, you all of you know. So these are certain examples where persons get uh, birth in the pious family. In our day-to-day -day life also, we come across some children, some young persons who are very, very pious and very, very devoted, so, de so much devoted that they will with going to temple, doing uh, arti, doing uh, you know prasadam, and Srila Prabhupada is another example. When he was a small boy, he used to take out Jagannath Rath Yatra, and he was given an idol of Lord Krishna uh, when he was a very small lad. So these are all 
elevated souls who have done some pious activities in their pre previous lives. And now they, when they get opportunity, uh, suitable opportunity, as Lord Krishna has just now mentioned, they get a birth in a high yogic family, high uh, uh, yogic, yogi family, transcendentalist family, a pure Vaishnava, a Krishna conscious family, or maybe a very wealthy uh, uh, family where they get all opportunities to continue their spiritual journey. So this is these are some of the examples from Shastra. Yes, Srila, Srila Mataji, if you are there, you would like to read? Jai Prabhu, Jai. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people, or into a family of rich aristocracy. Yes. This one also is 42. Yes, my friend. Are you or, able to see yeah. this screen? Yeah. yeah. Or if unsuccessful, or if unsuccessful after long practice of yogi, yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendental, transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. Bhagavad Gita verses 6.42. Thank you, Mataji. So let us go back to our uh, basic knowledge of yoga. What is yoga, in fact? What is yoga? Uniting thought. Union with God or linking with God, right? Yoga is when one is doing, you know, is linking, linking with the uh, when one is doing fruitive activities, he is bound to the cycle of birth and death. But when he is doing jnana yoga or doing empirical uh, study or empirical or analytical study or sankhya yoga, then he is predominantly in a devo devotional relationship with Krishna, but he is his uh, achievement is not perfect. But if it is in bhakti yoga, that is doing performing uh, devotional service of Lord Krishna, then that is the highest perfection of, of the devotional service or highest uh, 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 form of yoga. So, and you, we can reach yoga. We have already seen that in Ashtanga Yogi, reaches wants to merge into the Brahman effulgence. That he wants a Sayuji Mukti, he wants liberation. Whereas in Bhakti Yoga, the devotees do not want any kind of liberation. He wants eternally to perform pure, loving, devotional service to Krishna only. He wants eternal liberation because it, that, there is some activity in merging into the uh, Brahman effulgence or doing uh, this kind of uh, Sayuji Mukti. There is no activity. The person has to follow very, very strict and rigid discipline in life. Then, Gyan Yoga, Gyan is never complete and it is this life is very, very short to attain any kind of knowledge. And of course, the Karma Yoga, Nishkam Karma Yoga, <laughs> sorry, okay. That Nishkam Karma Yoga may take us to uh, pure uh, activities performed in pure goodness or in the mode of pure goodness, good. Uh, your uh, uh, mode of goodness, they can take, take us to higher planets. But as soon as in all these paths, except the devotional service, when the credit or the account of uh, our good activities are finished, we have to come back and re-enter into this cycle of birth and death. But when there is one attains translates by performing devotional service to Krishna, he always is already liberated. He's, he Because he is not living for himself, he is using his senses, all material objects, everything in the service of Lord Krishna. And there is no sense gratification. There is perfect control of mind. So Bhakti Yoga is the highest. And this is the uh, uh, sense which Lord is. Yes, Srila Mataji, this one also, please read. This is 43, translate, uh, trans, uh, part of verse 43. On taking such a birth, he revives the divine consciousness of his previous life and he again tries to make further progress in order to achieve complete success. Yeah. O son of Guru, 
So, the, the, whatever, uh, whenever such a birth takes place in a restrictive family, in transcendentalist family, a pure care for Krishna conscious family, or a, uh, you know, uh, or a yogi who is a uh, highly achieved yogi or elevated yogi, then his divine consciousness is, continues from the point where he left in the last birth. And again, he, he makes progress in his spiritual journey. So, this is the fate destination of an unsuccessful yogi. Now, we can see here that these small kids, they because of the pure association, because of their previous births or previous uh, sanskar, they are already uh, you know, initiated into the devotional service. Oh, yeah, Mataji, read it. By virtue, of... by, virtue, by virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles even without seeking them. Such an inquisitive transcendentalist stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. Thank you, Mataji. So that means he stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. We know the Vedas are mainly dealing with karma kant, dealing with the fruitive activities. If you worship this god or this demigod, then you get these results. So this kind of activities, they are such a uh, such a kid, is such a person who is uh, continuing his journey uh, from previous life in his spiritual path. He has already transcended the those karma kant steps. That means he has already gone one step ahead of Vedic knowledge and because uh, because he's, he is inquisitive and he wants to continue his devotional service from where he left. Yes, Mataji? Yes, Mataji? And when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being forced or of all contaminations, then ultimately achieving perfection after many, many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal. So, so that means there is uh, no loss or no diminution. If one uh, 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 starts his spiritual journey in this life and on account of some or other uh, deficiency or some kind of shortfall, he falls down from his practice devotional service and then there is no loss because he, God, Lord is kind enough to give him another chance to continue his spiritual journey and that his spiritual journey is in the form of birth in a in a, uh, a family of transcendentalists, aristocratic or yogic or a Krishna conscious family or pure Krishna family. So this is the fate of such a person. Now, by telling these things to Arjuna, Lord Krishna wants him that instead of Ashtanga Yoga, in the last verse of this uh, chapter, he says that the best yoga is the Bhakti Yoga or devotional service. Now, the, yes, anybody else would like to read? Swam Prabha Mataji? Anshika Jain Mataji? Anyone? Hare Krishna, am I audible? May I continue, Prabhupada? Yeah, yeah, please continue. Yes, section, six, section six, the topmost yogi. Yogis are greater than empiricistrutive workers and ascetics. Of all yogis, those who with full faith always think of Krishna and render transcendental loving service to him are the highest of all. So, Yogis are greater than empiricists. Empiricists, who are these persons? Proti workers and aesthetics. Ethics, aesthetics are those who are philosophers. Aesthetics are uh, those persons who are, you know, uh, doing uh, analytical studies and they are pious people, but they, their approach is wrong. And fruity workers are those persons who are doing karm kind activities or even uh, offering the results, Nishkam Karma Yoga, but that is not the end of it. And the empiricists are philosophers or speculators. So these persons 
in fact the path all these paths are ultimately should culminate into devotional service but yogis are greater such persons who are doing ashtanga yogi they are better than uh, philosophical speculators fruity workers and also mystic yogis of all yogis those who with full faith always think of krishna and render transcendental loving service to him are the highest of all so out of all these yogis in verse number 6.47 lord krishna says that the pure devotional service is the highest form of yoga yes so someone raised swam prabha mata ji you know, raised your hand you can read yes yes swam prabha mata ji please read. Please unmute yourself, Mataji. Swam Prabha Mataji wanted to read. You raised your hand. Uh, Richard Jan Mataji. Probably she is not able to unmute Swam Prabha. Richard Jan Mataji, you can read. Yes, Prabhuji. Yogi Nama Pi Sarve Sham. मदते नानंतरात्मना श्रद्धा भान भजते योमा समे युक्त तमो मता And of all yogis, the one with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself and renders transcendental loving surface to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So this is final verdict of Lord Krishna. In 46, this is 47. In 46, he says, Yogi is greater than the ascetic, uh, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruity. But therefore, Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. So whatever form of, you know, yoga you adopt, become a perfect yogi or, you know, all conditions. And the, here, what are the conditions here in the battlefield? To take a decision to fight and kill the enemy and win the battle. So now it is in verse 47, Yogi Nam Api Sarve Sham Mad Gati Nanantaratma Shaddaman Bhajate Yomam Same Yuktata Tomoma. That means, uh, Mata, that my opinion is those who worship me with Shraddha, that is with full faith, they are, they are, are always in me, established in me, and they are, or I am always with them. So, yogi nam api sarve sham mad gatin gati gatin nantar atmana. So, such a yogi always keeps on thinking of me, and this is what Lord Krishna wants from Arjuna. Then thinking of me, stand up and fight. He has already stated in earlier chapters that do it for me. Now it is an order from Krishna, and second verdict here is that of all the uh, paths of self-realization, of all the path of karma yoga, jnana yoga, ashtanga yoga, the bhakti yoga is the highest path uh, because uh, they, such a person always dwells in him and Krishna always guides and protects such a person. So this is a final verdict. And of all the yogis, the one with great faith who always abides me, thinks of me within himself. Now these are some very powerful statements one who with great faith who always abides me or uh, do let us compare ourselves are we always thinking of krishna every moment are we thinking of whatever we are doing are we thinking of krishna every moment that he is with us thinks of me within himself that as super soul krishna is presented within us and renders transcendental loving service to me so service we know transcendental loving service what we mean what krishna means always thinking of him even very small thing, this will come in further chapters of that how to think of Krishna all the time. Now, what what uh, he's the Krishna, uh, his opulences of the Supreme Valley, uh, chapter probably 11, uh, 10 or 12, he mentions that when you taste, that when you drink the water, that I am the taste of the water. So, whenever we drink that even simple water, let us assume that we, the Krishna is present in this water. The fragrance of flower when we uh, smell, let us think that it is Krishna's fragrance which is coming to us. So we have to, you know, completely overhaul our 
thought process our mind so that everything which is happening around we in that we see krishna we feel krishna and we always think of krishna so this is the message which lord krishna says and this is a very beautiful verse here yogi nam api sarvesham mad gate 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 nantar atmana uh, mana shraddhavan bhajte yo maam same yukta tamo ma shraddhavan one who worships me with full faith yo maam same yukta tamo Person, such a person is always united with me in yoga and is the highest and the yoga is the highest of all. This is my opinion. So, and we can see Lord uh, Srila Prabhupada here. He was such a pure devotee that he was always thinking of Krishna, always protected by Krishna and always rendering loving devotional service to Krishna. 13 years, he traveled 14 times the entire globe at the age of 69, 70 years had two heart attacks while traveling to the United States, New York, in a cargo ship. And uh, Lord was always protecting him because he was there on a mission to fulfill the desire, the orders of his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, that go to Western countries and spread the word of Lord Krishna, the message of Lord Krishna. And if you have some money, publish some books also. So just to commit uh, just commit, such a committed pure soul, pure Vaishnava Srila Prabhupada was that he was always thinking of Krishna within himself, outside himself and always rendering devotional service to Lord Krishna. So that is how Krishna protects such a devotee. And he today, probably anybody would not like to travel by a cargo ship to New York. It takes months to reach there with all ad adverse conditions of sea and uh, you know water but when he reached new york he didn't know where to stay what he is going to eat where what kind of people is going to meet about and so much of difficulties and troubles and uh, hardships yet he was so successful because krishna was always with him and he was always thinking of krishna so this is here and this uh, does does anybody know this story on the right hand side This is Rupa Goswami. He is writing uh, scripture religious books and he he wanted, you know, he wanted to make some kind of paisam or kheer with he, but there was, uh, this was a forest in Vrindavan. There was no milk, no rice, no sugar. And then a small young girl comes with out of blue and she brings all these things and he cooks and offers it as prasadam to Lord Krishna. Now when it, Rupa Rupa Goswami, uh, he tells it to uh, Sanatana Goswami, then Sanatana Goswami says that, oh, you have taken service of Radharani. She was Radharani herself who came to fulfill the uh, wish of this pure devotee. So this is, a, uh, this is the pastime over here in this picture. Uh, so Lord Krishna is always there, you know, in any form where he comes and protects his devotee and helps his devotees in attaining perfection in yoga. And Lord, final verdict here in chapter 6, Karma guys, the action in Krishna consciousness, which is the name of this chapter also, that is the highest, perform, uh, highest form of yoga because Krishna is very easy to please through devotional service. So you can see here, uh, this is another word which is mentioned in the same purport, uh, the translation of the verse 47, and of all the yogis, the the, he who always abides in me with great faith, great faith is required, worshipping me in transcendental loving services, most intimately united with me in yoga and is highest of all. So we come to end of this chapter. Uh, this is uh, uh, the summary. We have started from necessity of controlling the turbulent mind, how to control the turbulent mind because Arjuna was a pure devotee like Arjuna could not control. He said that it is so turbulent, it is so powerful, it is so obstinate that I can control the wind, which is very difficult for to even, even imagine to control wind, direction of wind, but he could not control his mind. Then Lord tells him out how, what is the destination. If one does not succeed in doing his Ashtanga Yoga or yoga practices, of any Gyan Yoga or Karma Yoga or, uh, you know, uh, Mystic Yoga or Astang Yoga, then what happens to him? He continues his journey in the spiritual realm, continuing his devotional service, Lord Krishna, and ultimately attaining the highest perfection of life. 
he that let me see lord is never lost to him that neither he is lord is uh, lost to him not the devotee is lost to him and the topmost yogi, yogi in 6.47 lord says is the bhakti yoga a person engaged in devotional service thinking always of me doing loving devotional service to me is the highest form of in the highest stage of yogi so this is the final uh, slide of this chapter we come to end end of this chapter any questions please put up uh, raise your hand and ask attendance link i have posted in the chat box is fill in the attendance link Uh, are you able to open the link, attendance link? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, please fill in the attendance. Any questions, okay. quick questions you can have. I'll try to answer. So this is a very beautiful chapter. And now we the journey to Karm Yoga is finished with section one of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Chapter one to six was Karm Yoga. And what is seven to twelve? We discussed earlier the second section and third section. 18 chapters divided into three sections, three parts rather. Uh, Prabhuji, today the attendance link, uh, link is saying something as describe how the practice of sadhana bhakti brings one to the stage of uh, bhava bhakti. Sorry, this sorry, 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 Mataji. This is a wrong link I posted. This yeah, is why yeah. I wanted to, uh, because I am not able to find the. Uh, Anyway, let me try to get the correct link for you. Attendance, leave information, and I should just drop the information. Attendance form. Just a minute, Mother. I'm just posting. Um, that was a now I have posted just now please check this form is opening does it work Mataji uh, yes probably this is the right one thank you thank you yes any questions and if somebody has raised his hand. Yes, Shyam Prabha Mataji, you have raised your hand. Any questions? Or doubts or addition or correction or modification? Svenproha Mataji, your hand is raised. You would, would like to say something? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we come to end of today's chapter and with a closing prayer, I shall close the session for today. Uh, Pancha kalp tarubhya shekrapa sindhuva e vijay pati tanam pavne pyo veshna ve pyo namo nama anand koti veshna ki brand ki jay shila prabhupad ki jay uh, Hare Krishna devotees Prabhuji and Mataji Tanvat Pram and thank you very much for your association and taking part in the class Hare Krishna 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 H